It's the traditional Christmas dinner, but have you ever given much thought to where your turkey comes from? Farmer Matt Carter is giving his customers a very clear insight, offering them the chance to not only hand-pick, but feed, look after and name their turkey all before it's slaughtered for Christmas. As you can imagine, this initiative hasn't gone down well with vegans, who have accused him of being a murderer and a psychopath. But this is, is this just another example of militant vegans going too far, or might they have a point? Well, we're joined by Matt now from his farm in Exeter alongside Vegan and Made in Chelsea star Lucy Watson. So welcome to both of you. Okay. Matt, we'll start with uh, you. All started with a post on Facebook. Yeah, um, I was out feeding the turkeys one day and I just thought it would be a nice idea if I um, allowed people to come and see them and meet the turkey and then possibly name it. And so... So I put the post on Facebook and... Um, I've got, the, I've got the post here. It says, come and pick your own Christmas turkey at the farm shop. We'll put a name tag on it. You can come and feed it, help look after it for the next two months. You won't need to get involved in any of the difficult bits at the end. Uh, we'll even bonus stuff it for you when you come and pick it up in time for Christmas. Can, so, just from your point of view, why do you think it's a good idea to name your turkey and get involved in the final couple of months of its life? Well, uh, I'm a father and my, uh, my children, I want them to know where their meat comes from. I want, I want them to understand what, what it's about being a farmer. A murderer and a psychopath. And how are your children with that? Because I'm, I'm not a vegan, but to, to sort of strike a bond with, a, with an animal and name it, I can't imagine doing that with my daughter and sort of almost acting like it's some, a pet or, you know, something that you're fond of and then the realisation of what actually happens to that animal. How, how are children with that? Yeah, the, the, whole, the whole naming thing was slightly taken out of context. The naming, the naming thing was written when I was out in the middle of the field feeding them, and I meant, we'll have to name the turkey so you'll know that turkey belongs to Mr and Mrs Smith, um, that turkey belongs to Mr and Mrs Stone. So it's not... It wasn't... Although some people have named them and come up with names for them, that, but, but the fact still remains the same, that... People should know where their meat comes from, and if you're going to buy meat, then then why not why not know that it's come from an ethical farm that's well looked after, and the turkeys have been free range and had a good life. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go yes, for it. Of course. And um, what what do you mean by ethical exactly? Well, they've been well looked after. We we they're free range. There's they're slaughtered humanely in well and and looked what, after the best way what possible. What is a humane slaughter? Exactly. Huh. Well, the, in, the, in the most stress-free possible. What does that entail? Well, it entails killing the turkey. But you, there's no other way of getting your Christmas dinner without killing the turkey. Just out of interest, how do you kill the turkey? Just out of just genuinely you curious. You slit the turkey's throat. Okay. Um, Lucy, you um, obviously, you know, we, we get we see the point that you're uh, mm -hmm. that you're making there. Um, yeah. Is there any area here that you agree with Matt that it's quite important? It's it, it's, it's very European. The French are very good at this, and that okay. you know you have a relationship with your food. You know where it comes from. You can make an informed choice. You don't walk into a supermarket and it's packaged up. Lots of children when they buy their lamb chops have no clue where yes, they actually exactly. came from. Yes, um, exactly. So, is there any point that you agree with here? At first, obviously, I was a bit like, this is kind of psychotic because, you know, this is the kind of way that you would treat a pet. Um, well, you did actually say anyone who yeah. names their turkey, anyone who goes onto that farm and does that is psychotic. Yeah, but obviously I disagree with the killing of animals, full stop. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I've thought about it and I think actually, in a way, it's good because I want people to be able to make a connection with these animals and realise that they actually you know, have souls and that they feel pain and that they're gentle creatures that mean no harm to us and that maybe if people do make the connection, maybe they won't want to have these animals killed on their behalf so that they can eat them for Christmas or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Why are you calling for everyone to be vegans and not vegetarians? There doesn't seem to be any sort of middle ground here. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, I used to be vegetarian for a long time, most of my life. I grew up on a working farm, which a lot of people don't know. Um, and I used to be vegetarian. I became vegan just through education and... I found out that the dairy industry and the egg industry is really cruel. I didn't realise that, um, you know, in order to have milk, you have to have a baby cow, and then in order to take the cow from the, 
from the milk from the cow, you have to take away the baby. So I found out that actually the dairy industry is extremely cruel and it kills millions of calves every year. In, uh, in 2016, one percent of the British population was vegan. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and now, uh, in yeah, April, I think it was, 3.5 million, seven percent. So obviously, you know, people are drifting away, yeah, uh, away from yeah. meat, through vegetarianism, yeah. into veganism. So it's definitely happening. But uh, uh, where people have a, a real um, dislike of the way it's being done is when yeah. you have a guy like like Matt, slit the turkey's throat. Um, who, uh, who's you know got his his business up and running. Yeah. Um, he's doing it as ethically, ethically as is possible. Mm -hmm. I know you don't accept I that. I don't think you can use. But at the ethical, same, but, yeah. but at the same time, you've got people spray painting uh, the front of his yeah. shop, 100%. the front of his business, yeah. and also calling him a murderer. And mm. he's had death threats. Do you agree with that? Um, I don't agree with violence um, in any form, really. Um, this is kind of why I'm vegan. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm sure some people get a bit carried away with their passion, emotion, whatever. I don't agree with it. But then at the same time, like, as a vegan, I get met with abuse from meat eaters all the time. Like, if I talk about veganism or whatever on social channels, I always get people sending me kind of abusive messages. So it goes both so ways. You, so I you're think. getting it in this, the, this yeah, sort of same respect think, because you are I a vegan. I think it's a huge controversial topic at the moment and mm -hmm. it is relevant. As you say, a lot of people are making the change to be more compassionate. So I think that it does go both ways and, it, and it's a shame that that's happening. But um, I don't think it takes away from the fact that by being vegan, you are making a more compassionate choice. Final word to you, Matt. Anything you'd like to add? No, I think I think I think there's if a vegan's going to target if a vegan's going to make a campaign and target anybody, I don't think a full small farm shop in Devon that's trying to be inclusive to everybody and look after their animals in the best way is slit the turkey's throat. Look after their animals in the best way is slit the turkey's throat.